stuff that Donald Hoffman talks about in, in even in prepping his lectures, he talks about the fact that our our experience of reality at a very fundamental day-to-day -day level is subjective. You know, yeah. that we will, you know, that we can, that's how optical illusions work right. is because our, ex, our experience of reality is, uh, is subjective and that you can, you can see things as being different colors when they aren't different colors, uh, depending on the context that you're seeing them in. Uh, you know, you, you, you have the, uh, you know, is, is it a duck or a rabbit? You can only see it one way or another, that optical mm -hmm. illusion, because our, because reality is subjective. And, and because it's subjective, it's inaccurate. And so no one can know to, you know, I, you know, it's almost like, you know, the old saying of uh, seeing is believing it's closer to actually believing is seeing um, is the, is probably closer to the reality of yeah. how we perceive mm -hmm. the world. He's, and he believes that essentially the, the, the universe is, uh, is, is really built up of conscious entities and uh, consciousness, the consciousness itself is the baseline reality mm -hmm. of the universe. There's this idea about summoning. I, I was in conflict. I had this problem with, I'm a nuts and bolts guy, craft, but I've witnessed this summoning shit and it's, it's pretty compelling. And I was like, I called Dave or texted Dave and I was like, man, I can't wrap my head around this. How could machines be connected to our consciousness? Yeah, we were talking about that and, and the thing that it, made me think of right away was uh, Princeton's uh, Universal Consciousness Project, which was a project they set up, uh, I forget how long ago, about 20 years ago now, I think. Um, uh, well, yeah, so it was right before 9-11 uh, that they set it up. But they started studying whether or not people paying attention to a machine could have an effect on the machine. So they set up random number generators and had people to sit in a room with a random number generator and think about the machine. Uh, and what they found was that when someone does that, the machine veers away from being random and starts producing patterns of numbers. And they thought that's weird. And they, so they kept doing it and they kept repeating it and they kept, it was repeatable over and over and over again. And then they thought, well, what happens if more people are thinking about something? So they decided they would set up random number generators all around the world um, and monitor world events and see what happens when a major event happens that has a lot of people thinking about it. And right after that, 9-11 happened. And what they found was that the, uh, the, all of the machines all across the world at once veered away from randomness and started producing patterns of numbers um, as a response to the, and so the effect seems to be connected to the number of people thinking about something. Another example where it, it veered was uh, when uh, Prime Minister of Canada died, Pierre Trudeau, and his son, now the Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, gave the eulogy. Um, you had 30 million Canadians all listening to this eulogy pretty much at the same time. And there was another event where the randomness uh, went, went off significantly, but specifically in those machines in the area of Canada. Um, so they found that, that consciousness was having an effect on machines. So if we're discovering that now, and we have this very primitive understanding of how, of, of how consciousness can have an effect on things, we have to assume that any technology advanced of ours, as, as far advanced of, uh, of ours as these UFOs obviously have to be, they must be also really advanced in terms of manipulating uh, the connection of consciousness to machines and to each other and, and being able to manipulate consciousness. Uh, so that's why to me, when I heard about the, the you know, the, these people saying that, that there was a connection to their consciousness, it seems obvious that there is a mechanical way to connect to consciousness that we're already discovering. So a few thousand years from now, we'll actually be able to turn it into uh, a meaningful technology.